From the origins of Optimus Primal and the threat of Scourge to the influence of the 90s TV series Beast Wars, here's all you need to know before seeing Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Transformers Rise of the Beasts hits theaters in 2023. It was originally set to premiere on June 24, 2022. However, the seventh installment of the robot franchise was bumped back by almost a full year. Now the film is set to be released on June 9, 2023 in the United States, Canada, and the UK. It will arrive in some European countries, including Italy, France, and Iceland, a little earlier, premiering on June 7. Other countries, such as Australia and New Zealand, will have to wait a little longer until June 22nd to see the film. June 2023 will be a pretty crowded month for blockbusters and tentpole movies. Rise of the Beast will find itself competing against some pretty awesome 2023 releases such as Elemental, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and The Flash. Rise of the Beast has a comparable budget to The Flash, coming in at $200 million. But with the controversy surrounding the film's lead, Ezra Miller, it's unclear how the highly anticipated movie will fare. So we'll be fascinated to see if Rise of the Beast can defeat its theatrical foes and claim the title of the summer movie champion. Rise of the Beast sees the Autobots and Decepticons duking it out again, while also ushering in new characters and a different story to breathe life into the franchise. The seventh Transformers installment, which is set in 1994, will follow a veteran named Noah, a man who loves his family and is looking for redemption from past mistakes. The female co-lead is named Elena, a museum researcher whose knowledge of artifacts will no doubt factor heavily into the plot. It's possible that through her work, she, Noah, and the Autobots discover the existence of three new tribes of Cybertronians, the Reptilian Predacons, the Villainous Terrorcons, and the Heroic Maximals, who all make their debut in this film. While Optimus Prime and Bumblebee have often been the most notable Autobots, taking the lead in the original trilogy and the 2018 prequel respectively, it's Mirage who forms the closest bond with the humans in this film. It'll likely be Noah and Elena's introduction to the Autobots, the same way that Bumblebee was for Sam Witwicky. The movie's official synopsis doesn't reveal a lot, but it does confirm that the Maximals will ally themselves with the Autobots in a battle against the Terrorcons, Predacons, and Decepticons. Since this is a prequel, we know the heroes don't succeed in wiping out the Decepticons, but fan-favorite characters like Optimus Prime and Bumblebee will live to fight another day. For the most part, the Transformers franchise is Michael Bay's gigantic, explosive, muscle-bound baby. The blockbuster auteur helmed the first five films of the franchise to huge box office earnings and mixed critical acclaim. For the 2018 prequel Bumblebee, directing duties were given to Travis Knight, who also directed the animated film Kubo and the Two Strings. Now a third filmmaker will enter the franchise as Stephen Capel Jr. is directing Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Capel made his feature-length directorial debut with 2016's The Land, a tale of four teenage skateboarders earning the wrath of a crime boss after stealing a car full of drugs. He followed that up with Creed II, which saw Michael B. Jordan's titular boxer grappling with his past and battling a Russian bruiser. He's also worked on the TV shows Rapture and Gronish. Speaking with Trey Mangum of Shadow and Act, Cable explained what he's going for with Rise of the Beasts, saying, There's a lot of heart and emotion that I draw from. If you've seen any of my work, I love to stay grounded, even though the scope could be here and we're blowing up stuff. At their core, Transformer stories are about good versus evil, truth, freedom, the importance of humanity, and doing the right thing even when it's hard. These themes are showcased through the unlikely heroes like Sam, Kate, and Charlie. This will be the case again in Rise of the Beasts, and director Stephen Capel Jr. has made it clear he wants the movie to show that heroes come in all different shapes and sizes. The entire creative team is in support of this messaging and is keen to make sure audiences meet new heroes and aren't just getting another version of the same old battle between the Autobots and the Decepticons. Producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura teased during an interview with Collider, I want to start by saying that what we're trying to do with this movie is to give the audience a lot of new. If you've seen and been a fan of the other movies, you're going to see villains you've never seen before, you're going to see Autobots you've never seen before, and you're going to see a lot of elements that we've never done before. Rise of the Beast brings a lot of new elements to the big screen franchise, but one constant that viewers can count on is Peter Cullen, who is back voicing the Autobot Optimus Prime. As a strong and steady leader of the Autobots, Optimus is the common thread throughout the Transformers franchise. But leaning into that theme of new, viewers are going to see a different side to him this time around. As a prequel, there's an opportunity for fans to see Optimus grow as a character, since at this stage, he's still figuring out his place on Earth. You've never faced anything like this. Let them come. His journey to becoming the planet's protector is just beginning. During an interview with Collider, the director said, in this film, it's forming why he has a link to humanity and why he has a link to Earth, and that's emotional. It's not home yet to him. He's like an expat here. He's landed, he's alien, and he's never been here before. That allows us to get underneath the stoicism of what we've traditionally presented in Prime. And so at this stage, he's going to look less like the Optimus from the Michael Bay films and much more like the G1 robot viewers saw in Bumblebee. Along with some returning cast members, there are some fresh faces as well. 
The new human lead characters are played by Anthony Ramos of Hamilton and In the Heights. He stars as Noah. Dominique Fishback of Judas and the Black Messiah plays Elena. Despite being new to the franchise, both actors have long histories with Transformers, making them perfect for these roles. Ramos spoke to people about his long love of Transformers, revealing that it was the animated show Beast Wars that got him into the franchise when he was growing up. He said, I was in front of the TV every week watching Beast Wars, so when I read the script, I saw we were going to have them in the movie. My head almost exploded off my body. Meanwhile, Shia LaBeouf was Fishback's window into the Transformers universe. The Disney Channel fan said in an interview with Collider, I used to watch Shia on Even Stevens. So to watch him go from this Disney kid to this movie star and being in the Transformers films, I was like, oh man, I want to do something like that. I couldn't imagine that almost 20 years later I would be doing it as well. Rise of the Beast also boasts several other notable cast members. The Lord of Casterly Rock himself, Peter Dinklage, voices the villainous Scourge. Ron Perlman plays the silverback Optimus Primal, a character he portrayed before in the animated Transformers Power of Prime series. Pete Davidson takes over the role of Autobot Mirage from the late Francesco Quinn, and Michelle Yeoh voices Arazor. Optimus, we must trust each other to protect the home we all share. One character notably missing from this list is Bumblebee, who was voiced by Dylan O'Brien in his 2018 solo outing. O'Brien's return to the franchise hasn't been confirmed, and his commitment to other features like Pony Boy has no doubt been keeping him busy. However, a voice role in the movie is definitely not out of the question, and viewers may just have to wait until the film is released to get confirmation. To tell this new story, the creative team behind Rise of the Beasts are introducing three new robot tribes, Maximals, Predacons, and Terracons, to the existing battle on Earth between the Autobots and Decepticons. The introduction of these new Cybertronians will change the course of the Autobot-Decepticon war that viewers have seen so far. Lorenzo D. Bonaventura explained to Collider, we had somewhat exhausted, I would say, that battle, so our hope was how do we find a new set of villains and a new set of priorities for the villains. However, the producer quickly noted that there were lots of tribes and new characters from the extended Transformers universe who had yet to be seen on the silver screen. The Predacons and Terracons fall on the side of the Decepticons, while the Maximals are a new tribe of heroes. These new Transformers turn into robotic animals and birds. Optimus Primal is the leader of the Maximals and transforms into a gorilla-like beast. Teasing a little more about what viewers can expect from these animalistic heroes, Capel explained to USA Today, In our particular film, they're these prehistoric animals that travel through time and space, and we find them here on Earth. Transformers Rise of the Beasts introduces both the Predacons and Terracons as two new factions of Decepticons, but one should be feared more than the other. In an interview with Collider, Capel said, When the Terracons enter the screen and disrupt our movie, you're gonna feel it. These robots are the main villains of the film, and they are led by Scourge, a merciless predator who takes pleasure in stealing insignias from the fallen Autobots he defeats. Capel was particularly excited about including Scourge, who was a blank slate for big screen viewers. He said, It felt like Scourge was someone that was untapped, that not only allowed me freedom, but it also created the super ruthless and scary character. Scourge's right hand is the shape-shifting Terracon Nightbird. She has been adapted from the Beast Wars cartoon for the movie, and according to the director, she has had some modifications made to her. She has a vehicle form that is new, but also possesses ninja traits. Teasing more about her history, Lorenzo Di Bonaventura said, What I find interesting is that she switched sides, and now she's a Terracon who has joined that side of it. Her history is one that has had flexible alliances, which is fun. It's pretty common for Transformers to explore different locations across the globe, showcasing how widely spread the robots have become. They don't just exist in cities like New York and Chicago. They also hide out in the deserts of Egypt and Jordan, as seen in Revenge of the Fallen. Meanwhile, Age of Extinction took viewers off to far-flung locations like China and Iceland. Rise of the Beast follows a similar pattern. The film traverses continents, taking viewers to locations like New York and Peru. Additionally, the movie was filmed in a few more places, including Los Angeles and Montreal. However, it was the South American locations that most excited the film's director. He revealed to Collider, Very few films have been shot not only in Peru, but also Machu Picchu, and they opened their doors for us. I'm grateful to collaborate with Peru and highlight Peru's culture and the ancient civilization. They have beautiful landscapes and sites, but most importantly, beautiful people, and I'm excited about that. This location is no doubt going to be important for the character of Elena. As a museum researcher, this may be where she discovers one or more important artifacts relating to the Terracons. The Transformers movie franchise sprang into action in 2007 when Shia LaBeouf played Sam Witwicky, a shy but smart high school kid. But with the help of Bumblebee, Optimus Prime, and their transforming friends, as well as Michaela Baines, Colonel William Lennox, and Agent Simmons, he became an Earth-saving hero. LaBeouf returned twice more with his companions, but in his third outing, Michaela was replaced by his new love interest, Carly. This was Sam and Carly's last appearance, and director Michael Bay went on to helm a new duology, starring Mark Wahlberg and Nicola Peltz-Beckham. 
After this, Travis Knight took the franchise back a couple of decades to 1987, introducing a younger Bumblebee to Haley Steinfeld's Charlie. Rise of the Beast is set eight years after Charlie's adventures with the Transformers. Following the emotional ending of Bumblebee, which saw Charlie and Bee part ways after saving the day together, Charlie chose to stay with her family and friends, while Bee had to embark on a new mission of his own. Goodbye, Bumblebee. After his adventures with Charlie, Bumblebee's new mission was to reunite the Autobots, and it appears that in the years since, he has done just that. Transformers Rise of the Beast picks up with the fan-favorite robots back together. Discussing how the setting of 1994 came about, producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura explained, We were thinking about it as a progression. Bumblebee was in 1987, so then how do we move it forward and also not run into the timeline of the Bay films? We had picked 94 in part because there was great music during that time period, so it felt like that natural extension. This fits perfectly with director Stephen Capel Jr.'s vision for the film. After reading the script, he felt very connected to the time period and wanted to continue the story. He also noted that along with the music Bonaventura plans to capture, there's going to be a lot of 90s culture and aesthetics throughout the film. So it sounds like viewers can expect a great nostalgia trip from Rise of the Beasts. Stephen Capel Jr. grew up watching the animated Transformers TV series Beast Wars, which ran from 1996 to 1999. And since the movie takes a lot of inspiration from the show, it's no wonder Capel found himself at the helm. He told Collider, What brought me to the project was the chance to imagine on a different level and to dream. That's what Transformers means to me. Dealing with robots, dealing with humans, and creating that bond. It's all about the emotion and where we can take our new characters. Despite the inspiration Transformers Rise of the Beast takes from the 90s show, not every element of it is being carried over exactly as it was. For Transformers fans who are familiar with Beast Wars, it's important to note that the 2023 film has taken some creative liberties, including introducing a whole new crew of voice actors. Time travel is one element from the series that Capel has indicated will be carried over. However, it won't be in the same way viewers have seen before. The movie's timeline will differ from the one established in Beast Wars, which is set 300 years in the future. Every director brings their own ideas and creativity to a project. Michael Bay did this with the first five Transformers films, putting his unique stamp on the franchise and delivering on the themes of heroes and villains, good overcoming evil, and hope overcoming loss. But moving forward from those films, Bonaventura said Stephen Capel Jr. brought a must-needed new perspective. He explained, We were trying to accomplish a certain change-up from the movies we did with Michael Bay. We want to deliver a film that has the scale and spectacle of the Bay films with the heart and humor that we were able to achieve in Bumblebee. The director's new perspective brought with it a darker tone to the movie. The fact that the main villains have the word terror in their name should instantly instill fear, according to the director who is planning to take that darker energy and run with it. He teased, I want to dabble more in horror in this one and make people jump out of their seats. You can't stop the Transformers. After all, they've earned over $4.8 billion at the worldwide box office, and they finally got some critical cred with their last venture, Bumblebee. If Paramount gets its way, Transformers Rise of the Beast won't be the last time these robots take over our theater screens. In February 2022, Collider reported that the official Paramount Twitter account had announced Rise of the Beast would be the first installment of a new trilogy. Assuming it does solid business, chances are good we'll see Noah, Elena, The Maximals, and Optimus Prime back on the big screen again. Nobody. I ain't even seen nothing. I'm not even seeing anything right now. A CG animated Transformers theatrical film will also follow in 2024, but is separate from the upcoming trilogy. The upcoming animated feature will be an origin story for Optimus Prime and Megatron. It will be set on Cybertron and have Superman and Krypton influences, according to producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura. In an interview with Collider, producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura talked about how much action viewers can expect to see in Rise of the Beasts. He confirmed that the film will strike a nice balance of CGI and practical elements. This means real-life stunts, which is where Anthony Ramos and Dominique Fishback's newly minted driver's licenses might come in handy. Alongside a stacked cast, there is also plenty of talent behind the scenes. Joining Lorenzo Di Bonaventura and Stephen Capel Jr. is Joby Harold, who created the story for Rise of the Beasts and co-wrote the screenplay. Sci-fi fans will know Harold best as the producer behind the Disney Plus series Obi-Wan Kenobi. He also worked as a writer on DC's 2023 movie The Flash, which is in direct competition with this Transformers feature. Additionally, Rise of the Beast will be rated PG-13 like all the other movies in the Transformers franchise.